it might look like things have gone backwards. The car's here in our workshop again and is clearly in pieces. But it's kind of the nature of what we're doing where we have to trial fit the bodywork, take it to electrical engineering, test where the prototype battery boxes are going to go, the other electrical components, where we've got to drill holes, and do all of that before we do the final assembly of the mechanical components and do the, all the final paintwork. Juniper looked pretty good already. And that was one of the reasons that we bought her was because she looked great in photos and we could drive back from Queensland, take all these photos. But we knew there was a bunch of parts that we needed to respray. Once you get closer, of course, you realize that, oh, well, I definitely need to respray this bit or this part of this panel. And it's actually easier and faster and better just to sand the whole thing back and respray the whole panel rather than trying to be selective and mask off things. So what's ended up happening is that we have re-sprayed everything. The thing we've always wanted to do with Jaunt was to distribute the manufacturing, knowing that the skills and experience to work on these vehicles and to do, you know, work on modern vehicles at all levels is all across Australia, that we wanted to, you know, I guess, take advantage of that, but also celebrate that and make sure that the people who's, you know, skills experience again but also love and effort and passion for these kinds of things and these kinds of trades was was built into every jaw now you can't necessarily see this little panel that's on top of the the gearbox and you know the seat will be here but if you look for it you'll be able to tell and there'll be a little history around each vehicle and so that includes things like the guys here who've worked on rebuilding the chassis and the the drivetrain making sure that we you know combine this this idea of like the best of modern manufacturing and sort of you know old world automotive charm together we can instead of having a stamped out panel we can laser etch a panel that goes on here and forever celebrates that these guys did this work uh here in coburg a few months ago one of the things with aluminium bodywork is that out of the factory they never really painted the bits you didn't see. They didn't need to, they'd oxidize a little bit, but they weren't gonna corrode. So you had panels that were painted, you know, green for example, on here, but really just left to their own devices on the inside. What happens though is that this isn't really a problem to us. We could leave it uh, raw metal, but we did want to soundproof it in a way. And when we talk about that, people, um, then ask the question, well, aren't you making a silent car? And kind of, well, yeah, we're removing the petrol motor and that's the biggest source of noise, but you still hear things. You still hear the gearbox. There's a lot of gears and there's a lot of wine from that. You also hear stones flicking up from the tires and hitting the bare metal. And that can sound like incredibly loud. It sounds like a little gunshot um, when you're driving down the road and even water spray uh, when it's wet, you just hear this crackle on the on the bare metal. So we're spraying on a um, a product that's made from here in Australia from recycled tires. We're spraying that all through the inside, so it sort of rubberizes the the coating. Now modern cars have all kinds of stuff like this to to stop the noise, but we can spray on a simple coating of um, sort of a you know, recycled tire on here, which deadens the whole noise and also assists with heat. Good, isn't it? Isn't it good? This rear tub was a lot of work. And if you remember, there was a big dint in one of the, in the far side there. So as well as sanding stuff back, we needed to do a little bit of panel beating. The thing with aluminium is that it is more difficult to panel beat and more difficult to work with and get smooth, unlike steel. Um, we also didn't want to re remove too much of the character. We don't want to panel beat out every dent. There's no reason to, it's an old four wheel drive and all those little dents have a little story behind them. So we can create perfect paint over a history of knocks and dents. And also, you know, remove the fact that, remove any filler. We're not trying to disguise. This had, in some cases, a centimeter of filler through here just to try and get it smooth. And you can chase that forever because aluminium panels 
always have a little bit of a wave in them, never quite flat. Um, well, they are now, but you know, in a modern car made out of aluminium, but in these old days with these flat sheets, you just never got this perfect straight thing. So a bunch of rivets and a bunch of, um, you know, bending and a bunch of little brackets here and there to get it all straight again. One of the challenges of an old four wheel drive is the lack of power steering, which is kind of weird because, you know, no cars had power steering for years and years and years, and it's fine to a point. It does require effort and it does require stamina to operate for long periods of time. And then the more that you add other features that increase safety or ability or utility, like bigger tires, wider tires, make it harder to steer, you know, particularly when stationary. Adding a steering dampener that reduces the shock, particularly when you're off-road and you hit you know, a bump in the steering, that makes it a lot harder to, to steer as well, a lot more effort required to steer. The challenge for us then is that this was a car never built for power steering, has a steering system that really doesn't, isn't the way that modern cars are built. So we need to find another solution to put assistance into that steering to make the car more accessible to more people. And the answer to that is electric power steering. So usually power steering is driven in a hydraulic way and at a different point in the, thing, in the, in the sort of column and the steering system. But what we can do here is, this is the, the steering column, the steering wheel mounts on here, is we can hide in the dash a electric motor. And this senses movement and adds its own assistance to any rotational force that it senses. It can also do things like sense the speed of the vehicle and reduce the assistance when you're going faster so the steering doesn't feel too light. You can also dial in the amount of assistance that you want. So from like almost from, from nothing to, you know, finger light. Our choice we made was to put a new piece of aluminium on top of the original tub. The, there was bimetal corrosion where the steel had touched the aluminium and different things and it had worn through. There were some big holes through this. So rather than patch each little piece, we just placed a whole sort of one mil sheet of aluminium. You can see there, there's a, uh, you know, the original sort of two mil plate and then a one mil plate on top. Uh, which we just riveted down to make a new new surface. And some other areas around here too, like these big holes that were cut to, this had dual fuel tanks and they cut big holes. It was all torn up and, and ugly. This will be covered by a shroud, but we'll actually be running the, uh, if you remember from the last video, the, the charging cables will run through here and then run down into the, um, the battery boxes below. So this has just been covered with a, with a high fill, so like a, a, a primer that, that does feel a little bit of imperfections and we just sand that back very lightly. This isn't a process of endless coats, but it is, you know, getting rid of the, you know, little dents and little scratches um, to create a, you know, a really nice finish that we can be proud of. This car is the first prototype of many that we're creating. So, Part of that is we can treat this like a prototype, like a minimum viable product or an MVP. So on one hand, that could be argued that we should have just thrown the electrical components into Juniper as she was. It kind of worked, it was technically registered, there was a lot of unsafe things going on, but we could have put mounted up motors and batteries as it was unrestored. But it's not just an engineering test, it's an experience test in a sense. So it can't just, we know that electric motors can power a car. No one's doubting that we're not inventing the new motor or any of those components. What we are inventing as it were is the way that that can all feel together and to make it something that feels approachable and accessible and desirable to the widest number of people.